Today was take your child to work day, and this is what happened. I think the ideal person for like conserva, when they have a truck, they should like open the back, take everything out, clean it, put it all back. And then when the next day they need stuff, they list off what they need. Then they put all of it in their van so that way they have exactly what they need or a little more of it just in case they need more. And that way everything stays clean in their van and they don't have to worry about it being dirty and stuff. It would be a lot better and a lot more efficient. I love that word. I'm glad that word came out of your mouth and not mine because I was going to say that word, efficient. That's exactly why we do that. And go! Yeah, tell them that you don't need and that way you don't get anything confused. Nice, yeah. That's absolutely what you need to do. Hired. No? Oh, I thought he was going to be a girl. No, Juan's a super nice dude. So when we go out to a commercial site, we have to fill out a form, a paper form that we keep in the office as a paper record of all of the data from each of the controllers and all of the repairs that we need to make. And then and all the information, like the stuff that you need. Yes, all the information of the stuff that we need to do to the uh, irrigation system that we're working on. We do have to transfer all of that information into a digital uh, form on Service Minder, which I'll show you when we get out in the field. But this is our paper copy, and we do this to make sure that we don't miss anything. Because if you try using your brain to remember everything, even though you're pretty good at memorizing a lot of things, numbers are great with you, it's still better not to try to memorize everything and to use the paper. So that's why we're printing all of these. And I'll show you how to fill these out when we get out into the field. All right, we got all of our stuff printed up. Put it in our backpack, and let's get out to the field. All right. Later, Juan. Later, bro. Have a good day. We will. All right, so the first thing we're going to start with is this little form right here. You can go ahead and put the multimeter down. Take the pen and paper. And for the location, we're going to write North Monument. Right. Good. Uh, we don't need to write anything for the source because we already know all this information. If this was a brand new site, we would write the water source. Actually, let's go ahead and write it. The water source in this uh, case is called Reclaim. All right. Uh, there is no backflow here, so we can skip this. There's also no pump here. Because it being reclaimed, this water is being pumped into this property by the city. So we don't have any of this to worry yeah. about. There isn't a rain sensor at this site because they're using HydroWise only as their uh, rain sensor, which if they had one, it would be a better case because then they would know if it was raining at this site and not just at the weather station, but that's yeah. a story for another day. We'll go ahead and flip it to the next page. All right, let's that under there. All right, so on this page, mm -hmm. we're going to write the location again, North Monument. All right, the brand of the controller is going to be... Hunter. Yep. And they paired with... The model of the controller. I Hold on. Wise. Well, that's the software, but this is the model. HCC Wi-Fi. Just HCC is good HCC enough. Figure. All right. This is asking for the zone count. What do you think that means? The amount of zones. Bingo. So we'll go in here. And the way that you would figure that out is the, each module has eight. So this one also has eight. So eight plus eight is... So there's 16 zones wired to this controller. Yeah, yep. We could add more and we will in the future. There is a plan to add even more Watch zones to this. What about this? Well, that extra module will get used with these wires oh. when we start performing work on a different section of this property. For now, we only have the main section of the property wired into this controller. I don't know why I just closed this. So the next step is you could take your clipboard. Oh, actually, no, sorry. You're gonna need to know some information that Normally, on a regular controller, you would find that information right here on the screen. You can find it in here, too, but yeah, we're going to make it easy. We're going to find all that information in the HydroWise app, and we'll do that when we get back into the van. So we can skip this part for right now because we're going to do this part. Now you can put your clipboard up there because the next step is going to be using that tool you put on the ground. You can put the pen right here. So to get the wires out, you would squeeze this to open the clamp. This? Mm -hmm. So then you would, yep. around all right. all right so before we get started you're going to need to set the multimeter to the right setting so for what we're going to do is called an ohms test and the ohm signal is that little omega signal down there so you want to move that thing all the way to the blue yep 
And then what we'll do, what I like to do is just kind of clip this right here so you can kind of see the numbers. And then you're gonna touch the black lead always to the white wire up there, the common. So put the black lead on there, hold it there. Now put the red lead on the number one wire. And then what number does it say? 26.5. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and write them down as you do that. So I got 26.5. Go ahead and do number two. 27.5. 28.1. And that's it. That's it. Now, I accidentally just filled out my own form wrong and I'll show you what I did. We're supposed to write the zone run times right here in this column. And we're actually supposed to put the ohms readings in this column, I messed up. So it's not the end of the world. We can write ohms right here. There, ohms, fixed. And then we'll write the run times right here. We'll get the run times off of HydroWise because it'll be easier for you to see it there than it would be to try to see it on the screen here. Oh, okay. So we've got all the information we need. We now know that out of all those numbers, which one looks out of place? The one that's zero, six. That means that there's a problem with that one. And the reason why we do this test in the beginning of our, our inspection is so when we go to check number six, we already know that one's not gonna turn on. So we're not gonna waste our time trying to turn that one on and driving everywhere to go look for it. And I also know where it waters, but if we didn't know where any of these zones watered, we would know at least that zone six is not gonna turn on because it gave us a zero. There's no way it will turn on. So this takes like the, it shows like the amount of like output it is. It shows the resistance. the resistance. So what does that do? It's letting us know that the electrical signal from this point to the solenoid where the valve is at and back to this point is good. All right, so we'll go ahead and start our, well, we'll get back in the van and we'll write down the rest of this information and then we'll start our inspection. He's got HydroWise on his phone and he has access to all of our controllers right now. He's gonna be the one operating the controller, not me. And he'll be the one writing all the notes down. So I'm just gonna be a fly on the wall while he does my job all day. All right. Yeah, this is probably the shorter way to go about it. Just be careful of that agave plant. There are spikes on the end of it. Good job. Be careful, Dad, right there. Yep. So go ahead without getting into the water too much, flag it so that we can find it later to fix it because that's definitely a broken head. Yep, right next to it, somewhere near it. Now, when we do this, we try to put the flag like right next to the sprinkler head so that it's easy to find it. There you go, that one's fi uh, flagged. I think we might have another one over here. No, that was a five inch rotor. Do you see where the bubbling water is coming yeah. from? So go ahead and flag it there. There you go. So we counted five rotors on the first zone. What we're gonna do is get back into the truck and write that down on the form next, okay? Well, we actually suspected that it was only two, but we found more because we actually checked. Yeah, because you gotta get out and check. You can't just drive by the zone. Yeah. So we found our first broken pipe and you see what it does to the irrigation zone. The whole darn thing is low pressure. So we're going to actually have to put a pink flag on that so that we identify it as a broken pipe. A red flag would mean a broken head, but that's all we thought we were going to find out here. So I only had them carrying around the red flags. Let's run over to the van, grab a pink flag, flag this out. We're really not going to be able to check the rest of the zone properly until we fix this. That one's broken. Is it not rotating? Yeah, it is. It's rotating. I can see it. Let's zoom in on it. It's, it's rotating. Wait. See? It's rotating. Where are you going? He's got to investigate. I love this. He's got to check it. He can't just drive by in a van and look at it. He's got to see it in person. Here one right here. Do you? Well, all the pressure is coming out from this broken pipe here. We would have to fix the broken pipe to increase the pressure so that we would be able to see the rest of the zone. If we flag all the heads that look like they're broken right now, we might be flagging heads that are not really broken. It's just not enough pressure because know, of this. I hear, I hear something. You do, because there is a sprinkler under there and there's just not enough pressure to pop it up because of this broken pipe. So let's get over to the van, grab the right color flag for that, and we'll move on to zone number three. So we still have a zone on this property that's not working from the controller, and that was zone number six. Remember from when you were filling out your paperwork? Yeah. Well, it it's in this valve box here. Go ahead and open up that valve box. Good job. Now go ahead and pull out the little timer that you see there. The, the other thing. Okay. Yep. Now, nope, don't pull too hard. Crouch down. Turn it to the other side where the buttons are. Flip it over. There you go. All right, hit the button that's pointing to the right. Hit it again. Like, hit it hard enough. You gotta tap it hard. There you go. There you go. It's in the off position. That's not good. 
So we're gonna hit the middle button until we get it. Well, now it's set to automatic. So unfortunately this was set in the off position, which is a problem. It is 9-11 in the morning. And the way that we are gonna start this, go ahead and hold it real quick. You're gonna hold down that arrow button. Hold it, hold it hard. There you go, you just started it, let it go. And then now, zone six will come on, which is this little area that's pretty brown, but that's because that controller was set to off. So I put it on. You can just set it down on the ground there because we're also gonna have to turn it off when we're done checking it. So the next thing I want you to do is grab your two flags there and then go down here. Oh, would you look at that? We caused enough pressure on this zone that we found a head. So we're gonna have to move that head. Go ahead and put a, a red flag. Don't step on that stone though. Just put a red flag somewhere near it. What I would do is put it right here. Oh wow, that's concreted in. All right, well, we that a bit. that's uh, an interesting find. I bring flags. Yeah, well go ahead and walk down this way and see if you see anything else broken. Yeah, because dad told me not to bring any flags. That one, does that look bad? No, that one looks good. Go ahead and walk all the way down and see if you see anything broken. There he goes, checking the sprinklers. Future conservant irrigation employee. They're good so far, he said. So that's my boy. He doesn't know it, but he's looking at zone five because I haven't turned that one off yet. Zone six is what we're supposed to be checking and that's over here on the right-hand side. All the way down to the end. The water does not bother this kid. He's a natural, I love it. All right, well, we'll let him finish checking this zone. We'll shut the timer off and we'll move to zone seven as soon as we're done here. That boy makes me proud. Looks like you got a little wet there. Yeah, I got a little wet. All right, now let me explain to you how to turn off the controller. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the minus button until the time goes to zero. Okay. Oh, now go back up until it goes to zero. All right, now leave it. Now that's gonna count down from 10 or up to 10 and then the zone will shut down. And just like that, we checked the one battery operated controller zone. At some point is in the future, back? we're gonna fix the wire that's in there so that we don't have the battery timer. What? Is it connected back to the thing or we have to? We're good here now. You can go ahead and put that timer right back into the box. It's set to automatic and not off, which is great because that area needs the water. So we're good to go. You got that upside down. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. I think he would have figured it out on his own. All right. All right, now we can turn on zone number seven and check that next. All right, so on this zone that we have running, do you see how there's like green and then brown and then green and then brown? Yeah. Well, that's because all of the sprinkler heads, or at least these right in here, are not tall enough to reach all of this er all of these areas right here. So what we're going to do is flag all of the heads that are not popping up through the grass enough and then propose to install six inch heads because those are probably four inch heads. Wait, so do we need to put a different one? Different and it'll be red flags because we're going to replace the head now I gotta go over there and make sure that it's not already a six inch because if it is, then that changes things. And instead of replacing the head, we need to raise the head. But we're not gonna, what we're not gonna try to do is raise four inch heads on turf that gets cut at four inches because that won't do the customer any good. They need six inch heads right here. And so if they don't already have them, then we'll give them six inch heads or a proposal to do that. If they do already have them, then we'll give them a proposal to raise them up to where they need to be so that they pop up above the grass. So let's go ahead and uh, flag all of those. 